morning. What a joy it is that we have so many splendid musicians in our church. With Pastor Doug way on a vacation, we're happy to welcome Reverend Charlie Gross from East Peterburg, Pennsylvania. He is a husband, a dad, a granddad, a podcaster, an author, and a well-deserving retiree. He served our country as a commander and pilot in the U.S. Air Force and as a lieutenant colonel in the Air National Guard. His service to God was as a staff member in the Donegal Presbytery and as a pastor at West Grove Presbyterian Church. For two plus years during the pandemic, he recorded the podcast, Encouraging Words. Then he authored the big book of Christian encouragement. It is an honor to have him here with us today. And this morning, I'd like to remind people, especially those who are joining us from a distance, when we take time to share the peace of Christ and to greet one another, you at home can do the same. You can share the peace of Christ through the various ways you're connected to other people. So as we share peace, I invite those of you who are here in spirit but not in person to think of someone in your life that you think it would help to reach out to and take a moment to reach out to them. In the meantime, I invite all of you who are here to share the peace of Christ with one another. Good morning, all. Good morning. We have lots of announcements this morning, so please pay, put your listening ears on. To the Sunday schoolers among us this morning, when you come forward to the children's message, please bring your coats so you'll have them with you for today's class. Sounds like you're going outside. Beautiful day. A celebration of life service for Catherine Grocky will be held here this Wednesday, April 10th. Visitation with the family will begin at 10 a.m. and a worship service will follow at 11 a.m. The burial will be in the Washington Memorial Chapel Cemetery immediately after the service. Then there will be a luncheon in our church's FBC's Fellowship Hall. This month's gratitude journal prompt is how do you show kindness to nature? Spring Fling Bingo will be this Friday, April 12th at 6 p.m. in Fellowship Hall. Come as yourselves or dress in your spring floral finest. There will be game playing, snack eating, and joke telling. Ooh. To register, please use the sign up genus in the, genius in the bulletin. Offerings for the One Great Hour of Sharing Collection will be dedicated next Sunday, April 14th. There is still time to contribute. Please remember to bring your special envelopes, and you can use some in the narthex, or you can bring your coins to fill up the fish banks. Who's got a fish bank? Do you need a fish bank? Okay, they're out in the narthex if you need any. This one's empty. He's hungry. Somebody's got to fill it. Nominating committee has an announcement. Just as a seed takes time to germinate, so nominations for elder and deacon need time to ruminate. In your bulletin, there's a handout requesting names from you for consideration for next year's class of elders and deacons. A brief description of responsibilities are listed here. 
And if you need to speak to an elder or deacon, can the current elders and deacons please rise? Oh, I'm one of them too. <laughs> so if you have any questions from what it, you know, a lot of it, you can sit down now, thank you. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them. So are you feeling the call to serve and lead our congregation? Do you sense or know someone else that would be a good choice to serve? Please pray, think, and submit your names to myself or to the church office, you can use these forms, by April 21st. Thank you. Okay, only two more. Zoom meetings scheduled for this week are, deacons meeting is today at 12 noon, finance Wednesday at 7 p.m., and adult Bible study next Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Okay, now we have a minute for mission. The MAC committee has invited representatives from the Meals on Wheels organization to present a minute for mission today. We have Linda Keenan and Alma Zadraco who will share information about the local program. You may please come forward. Good morning. Um, so I'm neither of those. You guys all know me. My name's Kristen Craven. I am with the MAC committee chair um, and Morgan. Um, earlier this year, we donated $700 to Meals on Wheels, um, the Phoenixville branch. So um, they're going to talk a little bit more, but we just wanted to do a quick check presentation um, to kind of just show what we're doing in the community as a church. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Alma Zadraco, and I just wanted to say a sincere thanks for inviting us today and also to the Mission Action Committee for their recent generous donation. And I can see I need my specs. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Meals on Wheels is a national program, it's a nonprofit program, and their vision statement at the national level is an America where all seniors live nourished lives with independence and dignity. And their mission statement is to empower local community, and I underlined local, programs to improve health and quality of life for seniors so no one is left hungry or isolated. Um, we are under the supervision of the Chester County Meals on Wheels office. That office became organized in 1972, so that was quite a bit a year, a number of years ago. The Phoenixville chapter, our local chapter, was organized in 1973. We were the third in Chester County. There were five local women affiliated with a multi-non-denominational group called the Church Women United, who started this chapter. By the 1980s, they, the program had grown, so they decided they needed to help try to get a little bit more money and funding. So they went to the Phoenixville Community Health Foundation, which is still active today, for funding support. And they were told, if you can raise $2,000, we'll match it. And so what they did was they contacted local churches in Phoenixville, and the goal was accomplished. So today, there are still two churches in Phoenixville who continue financial support to Phoenixville Chapter of Meals on Wheels. That would be the First United Methodist Church and First Presbyterian, and we thank you very much for that. Any gift that we get like that goes completely 100% towards the cost of client food bills. In 1991, Chester County did become incorporated and start, they started, that enabled them to start doing grant applications. So our chapter gets no funds from a county or state level. Our main source of income is from grants. The single largest monthly expense would be, what would you guess? Food. The average food bill for me on a monthly basis is well over $3,000. 
Our food provider is Phoenixville Hospital, and the company that they use is called Morrison. And the charge that they, they um, each meal is $4 and a quarter per, per meal. And the really beautiful thing about that is it hasn't changed for as long as I've been in the program, which is more than 15 years. They have not raised our price. Um, right now we have an all-time high of 42 clients and we are waitlisted. So of the 42 that we currently have, 16 pay nothing. Um, we ask people to pay something, whatever they can afford. And we do have some people that pay the full four and a quarter. But we also have people that only pay 50 cents a meal, maybe $2 a week. So quite a bit of subsidy is needed every month. Food insecurity is up. That's no surprise, I'm sure. And client financial stressors are also on the increase. The needs are greater than they have ever been. Um, most of our chapter, all of the chapters in Meals on Wheels, and fortunately for us, our chapter is powered by dedicated volunteers, and they are what make a huge difference in our program. Our chapter is also independently managed. Most of the chapters in Chester County the business piece of it is all taken care of down in Westchester. But we are the only chapter that handles our own bookkeeping, our own volunteer recruitment. We do everything independently. So right now I'd like to introduce my partner, co-partner, Linda Keenan. She's going to tell you a little bit more about that. And just the, the community support is so important, and it's what makes us so strong and successful. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Alma has given you a wonderful overview of Meals on Wheels. I am going to tell you about the part of the program which allows it to survive and thrive in Phoenixville, and that is our volunteers. We currently have 60 volunteers in Phoenixville who deliver meals throughout the month. Some only deliver once a month, twice a month. One couple delivers eight times a month. People give whatever time they can give. And we could not operate this program without them. Uh, if you want to be a volunteer, uh, you must get a simplified background check, which is completed by the office in Westchester. And then we figure out what slot in the route schedule works with your schedule, and we get you set up. Volunteers meet at the hospital at 11 o'clock, Monday through Friday, and pick up the meals there after checking them to make sure that they're correct. It takes about an hour to deliver the meals. Our clients are divided into three routes, and those are set up to be as geographically uh, combined as possible. Um, we provide all of our volunteers with a placard for their windshield, the name badge that they can wear, and they go out and deliver these meals every day of the month, Monday through Friday. Our volunteers not only are delivering food, they are also another set of eyes on our clients. The vast, vast majority of our clients are elderly. Many of them have compromised health or are in delicate condition, and we are able to keep an eye on them when we deliver those meals to make sure everything is okay. In the event that we can't make contact with a client when we deliver, or if we find their meal from the day before still sitting in the cooler, the volunteer immediately gets in touch with Alma or I. We reach out to that person's emergency contact. So we really are able to help them remain independently in their home, as well as giving them the daily food that they need. I can't say enough about how wonderful our volunteers are. They're dedicated, they care deeply about our clients, and they stay in touch with me constantly if they have concerns or questions about anybody. Uh, if you have any interest in becoming a volunteer, you can get in touch with me, 933-3332. Uh, um, I can set you up. Uh, I've made up a fact sheet that tells you everything you will ever need to know about being a volunteer. I always go out with new volunteers the first time they deliver to make sure they know what they're doing. Uh, and I just want to say again, it's a wonderful group that we have. and We are very, very fortunate in Phoenixville. Thank you for having us today. We really appreciate you listening to us and, and finding out more about the program.
Thank you very much. Please join me in the call to worship. Easter Sunday has come and gone, but the Easter season continues. Let us prepare to meet the resurrected one again. Disciples of Jesus, do not cower in fear in a locked room. Let us throw open the doors to the risen Christ. Christ gifts us with the Holy Spirit, a gentle breath on the cheek. Let us worship God in spirit and truth. Please stand if you are able for him 246, Christ is alive. be seated. First John chapter 1 verses 8 through 9 says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray together in unison. Sometimes, Lord, we are like Job, who saw himself covered by dark, thick clouds. And sometimes we are like Peter, crying out in fear because of the raging storm all around us. Sometimes, Lord, the thick darkness is within us, the darkness of depression, the darkness of doubt, the darkness of worry, the darkness of fear. Speak, Lord Jesus, with your strong yet gentle voice. Let us hear the word that brings calm, shalom, and forgiveness, the word that assures us that you are present with us, the word that brings peace, and the word that convinces us that in the end, your divine power will prevail. 
please take a moment for reflection. The one who calls us to this place calls us to reconciliation through grace. God will not deny a repentant heart or an open spirit. Know that you are forgiven and walk in the new way that is made known to you in God's love. Thanks be to God. Amen. my friend Westminster. You guys remember Westminster, don't you? No. Oh. How long has it been since we've done this, Westminster? Hmm. Well, sort of long, yeah. Probably since summer sometime. It's, it's been a while. Westminster missed you guys. Yeah, well, but it's been a while. He, he was asking me this morning, oh, wow, you haven't taken me to church in a while. What's up? You can after the sermon. When we go upstairs, you can pet the rabbit, okay? He likes to be petted. It's a rabbit, uh, mommy. I want to Both, it's both, both guys. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I lost control of that one there. <laughs> Who would have thought a random rabbit? Well, I wanted to ask you guys, did you feel the earthquake on Friday? No? You did? Uh, mm. You heard about it, but you didn't feel it. No, you guys didn't. You did. So well, I got one. I kind of thought I'd have a whole bunch. Like, hmm, we might have to rethink this, Westminster. <laughs> so, what did what did you think when you felt it? Ah, so you were in school. Did you, what did your teacher do? Mm. Ah. Yeah, so just you just felt it a little. Yeah, it was yeah. Um, we felt it a little too where I live, and actually the air conditioner repair person was visiting us uh, to look at my air conditioner when uh, when the earthquake came in. And he would he just didn't know what it was. He was guessing all sorts of things. He thought maybe it was the wind or maybe it was a truck. And he just didn't know. But, but Westminster and I kind of knew what was going on. Yeah. See, when Westminster was a baby bunny, we lived in Southern California. And we had a, a fair bit of earthquakes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did. We had some good ones when we were there then. So we kind of knew what it was once we figured, yeah, okay, yeah, I, I know what this is. But other people didn't know. So Easter is kind of like that. We look back and we think everybody had it all figured out right from the beginning. And then the disciples just said, okay, oh, this is great. We'll just move right on. But they didn't know quite what had happened. It was kind of different and something new. And what do you think they did? What they did was sort of what we did. Because like, I know when it, at work, like a couple of my coworkers were online saying, did you just feel that earthquake? And so the disciples gathered together and they kind of talked about what was going on. They said, what, what is it that just happened? What did that mean? And they talked about some of the Bible verses that they knew and they kind of tried to make sense out of something that was a little earth shaking, kind of. And, uh, all right, all right. Don't give me grief, Westminster. I know you would have been better. Yes, it's all right. So... But, he, but that's what they did. And, you know, as we're trying to understand 
what Easter means to us, we could do the same thing. We kind of gather together. It's really important that God's people get together and talk with each other and know each other because that's one of the ways that we make sense out of things that are different. And that's how we learn and that's how we grow. So I want you guys to keep asking all the good questions you ask, but you can ask them of Pastor Doug, okay? And, uh, and that's one of the ways we learn. And just talking with the adults that are here, all of these resources that are here, and as we learn what it really means for Jesus to have risen from the dead. And it's really kind of not, not always easy to understand, but together we can sort that all out. So let's have a prayer. Yeah, I, it, it's time. We're losing control here, Westminster. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you give us the gift of each other to help us understand who you are and how you are at work in our world and in our church. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's head on upstairs, guys. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Listen for what the Spirit is saying to the church. Our first reading is the entirety of Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Our second reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, 
Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, good morning. It's, <clears throat> it's wonderful to be back with you. It's, I haven't been here in probably at least five years, and it may have been longer than that. Um, but it's, um, it's so great to be surrounded by um, such, such beautiful music, such beautiful musicians, and all the people who, uh, that help lead this kind of, lead this worship. Um, so let me start. So last Sunday, we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We celebrated Christ overcoming death, darkness, sins, and the grave. We celebrated the power of resurrection hope. We were all decked out in our hats, our pastels, our bow ties, our Sunday best. Oh, we were a pretty bunch. You were a pretty bunch, I know that. You're probably still sharing those selfies and those family photos with one another. We were on multiple sugar highs with the energy of five-year-olds. And we were all shouted at the top of our lungs, he is risen, he is risen, he is risen indeed. I know you were doing that. Yeah, it was great, it was great. But now, oh now, today. What about today? This is called Low Sunday. The energy is gone, the balloons are burst, deflated, the sugar lows are still kicking in, especially from those little yellow uh, sugary peeps. Yeah, Easter basket grass might still be on your carpet, it's hard getting out of bed. We got the blahs, and especially with the weather this past week, oh my, we got the blahs. We're back to the same old, same old. Yeah, last Sunday was Easter morning. The great, exciting, invigorating news of life. The empty tomb. It's the reason we worship on Sundays. That was last Sunday. This Sunday is Easter evening. And I'm afraid that a few of us are huddled here maybe somewhat like the disciples. Let me explain. Those are these locked down, fearful disciples heard from the woman, the women that Jesus arose, but they hadn't seen him with their own eyes. They heard that Jesus was alive, but they didn't physically see him. And they didn't believe the women. They didn't believe the women. They didn't believe the women who were eyewitnesses to Jesus' resurrection. Now, I hate to say this, but to the women, not much has changed in 2,000 years, has it? They don't believe the women. You see, at this point in the biblical story, none of the disciples had seen the risen Lord. Only Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, Cleopas, and the one with Cleopas on the road to Emmaus. According to the scriptures, only those four saw the risen Lord Jesus Christ. The disciples heard about it, but hadn't seen the Lord yet. They didn't believe the Lord was risen and with them. So, where are we in this story? Are we like the early disciples? Not that we're in fear of being tracked down and, and crucified, but perhaps we're living with other fears. We could be here huddled with other fears, anxieties, frustrations, we could be fearful and frustrated about maybe some medical, personal medical concerns. Maybe relationship woes, broken relationships or, you know, the, the, the family divides. Maybe memory lapses. Maybe we're, we have some fears about the situation around the world, global warming or the wars that, are, that just keep raging on or maybe even in the Middle East. Maybe we have fears about economic collapse the southern border issues, or the moral collapse of the country. Fearful, maybe fearful of terrorism, fearful of the other, 
fearful of, of people who, in our midst who don't look like us. Friends, when we huddle together in, with like-minded people in fear, it becomes like an echo chain. You share your fears and worries and then they reflect them back to one another and they get heightened. You say how bad things are and everyone agrees and then they throw worse examples out, which even heightens the fear. The huddle helps to fan the flames and propagate greater and greater fears. Sometimes in huddles, the news we become is a self-fulfilling prophecy, a, re a self-reinforcing one. Things get exaggerated and get out of proportion. So you huddle here in fear, locked in your own negative, fearful thoughts and fearful state. The con common denominator is fear. And fear debilitates. Fear crushes our spirits. So we might find ourselves in our scripture today either huddled up here as the ten disciples, or maybe out there alone like, like Thomas. But friends, I have good news. No, I have great news. I have wonderful news, but you will have to believe it. You will have to believe it. I can tell you good news, but you must believe. For today, the day of resurrection, into this fear huddle, is exactly when Jesus burst into the room. Well, he doesn't burst into the room. He simply appears. He walks through the closed, shut, locked doors. And I submit to you today that through this word of God, Jesus, the living word of God, is appearing to you and to me. Jesus Christ is appearing to you and to me right here, right now, in this place, in this time. Do you believe this? Do you believe it? For where two or three are gathered in, in his name, Jesus is here. Jesus is here among us. Jesus is here and knows exactly what we need to live and move and have our being. That's why he's here. He knows you. 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 He knows me. He knows what we need, and that's exactly why he's here. It's why he's here with his presence and his peace. His presence and his peace. Friends, the risen Lord Jesus bursts into our locked rooms, into our huddles of fear with risen and reigning presence. He bursts in to show us he's alive. He is well. He is present. He's present in our fears, in our worries, in our anxieties, in our frustrations, in our huddles of fear, he shows up. He doesn't abandon us as orphans. He's even here right now today. Friends, Jesus is present. And when Jesus is present, there is peace. When Jesus is present, there is peace. Let's say that together. When Jesus is present, there is peace. One more time. When Jesus is present, there is peace. Doesn't that feel good? Doesn't that feel wonderful? Now, notice that Jesus doesn't chastise you, doesn't belittle you for your fear, doesn't wag a finger at you in fear, doesn't, he doesn't do any of that. He just comes and says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. He says it twice to the disciples, and then later, the next week, he says it when Thomas is with them. Jesus is present, and Jesus brings peace. Do you believe it? I hope so. Now, notice this. Nothing stops Jesus from showing up. Fully present, fully alive, nothing stops him. Death doesn't stop him. Desertion doesn't stop him. Doors don't stop him. Depression doesn't stop him. Dejection doesn't stop him. Doubting doesn't stop him. You can't stop him. The authorities can't stop him. Nothing stops Jesus' presence and peace. He shows up in the disciples' deepest needs and friends, he shows up in our deepest needs as well, with his presence and his peace. We just need to believe. Aren't you glad you came today? Aren't you glad? And then it gets better. Oh, it gets better. It gets better. So after showing up with his presence and his peace, he breathes on the disciples and says, receive the Holy Spirit. He's as close as breath. He's as close as, as breath to you now. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Do you realize what he's doing? 
He has given them his power and a purpose. His power and a purpose. And friends, today, right here and right now, Jesus shows up with his presence and his peace and gives us, gives you and me, his power and a purpose. His power and a purpose. Jesus is present, brings his peace, gives you and me power and a purpose. Now, a few years ago, one of Henry Nowen's daily devotionals posts said this. He said, we seldom realize fully that we are sent to fulfill God-given tasks. We act as if we have to choose how, where, and with whom to live. But we were sent into the world by God, just as Jesus was. Once we start living our lives with that conviction, we will soon know what we were sent to do. Friends, you and I were sent into the world with the presence, peace, power, and purpose by Jesus Christ. Let me repeat that. We were sent into the world with the presence, peace, power, and purpose by Jesus Christ. You know the beautiful thing about this? The Lord is unhuddling us from our lockdown positions. The Lord is opening us to life like the, like the, the leaves of the trees or like the flowers starting to open up calling us to be busy, sort of like the busy, buzzing bees in our gardens. The Lord is opening us up to new adventures, new possibilities. He breathes on us and says, receive the Holy Spirit. Now the word breathes is the same word used in Genesis 2-7, when God gives us physical life. And it's also the same word used in Ezekiel 37-9, when Ezekiel speaks to the dry bones and says, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain that they may live. The Lord God breathes physical life into us, and the Lord Jesus breathes spiritual life and power into us for his purpose. So listen, friends, when we believe that the Lord is present with his peace and given us power and a purpose, we truly live. We truly live. Now, once you realize that you are being sent, you may wonder, where you're being sent. Well, here in this community, you're being, you may be being sent to the people-to-people -people food ministry, to the people-to-people -people clothing ministry. You may be sent to the uh, Meals on Wheels ministry. What was it, 932-3332? <laughs> what was it again? 933-3332. Oh, 933-3332. 933 <laughs> Three, 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 two. You, could, you guys can do that, right? <clears throat> you may be sent to this to, to, to uh, add to this beautiful music ministry that you have. You may be sent to an administrative ministry. You may be sent to a financial ministry. You may be sent to create your own unique ministry. The bottom line is this. You and I were sent into the world by our risen, reigning Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us his presence, his peace, his power and a purpose. It's up to us to discover where we're sent and how to serve. But listen, when Jesus showed up for his disciples to give them his presence and peace, he showed them his hands and his side. He showed them his scars. At first I thought, yeah, I get it. He's authenticating himself. It's sort of like when you call your bank or your credit card, they say, what's your mother's maiden name? What street did you live, grow up on? you know, authentication stuff. But I started wondering, could Jesus be showing us his scars to say, you know what, when you get sent, you get scarred. We're being sent, and we'll probably get some scars along the way. You probably have some scars, and if you don't, you'll get some. When you get sent, you probably get a few scars, even with Jesus' presence, his peace, his power, and purpose. So don't be shocked or surprised. Now, I have a way for you to remember this, and that's when I have some uh, helpers gonna, gonna come around and give you a one cent piece. You know what that is, it's a penny, right? So you're all gonna get a one cent piece. Um, you can start giving them out because I want you to put this one cent piece on your nightstand, on your dresser, on your desk, 
on your bureau drawer, somewhere so that when you, when you see it, you're, when you see it daily, you'll go, oh yeah, I'm sent. I'm sent by Jesus Christ. You'll always remember it. I'm sent by Jesus Christ. I'm sent with his presence, his peace, his power for a purpose. I'm here for a purpose, and it's going to help you remember today, this sermon, and, you know, maybe a new adventure where you're being sent into the world by Jesus Christ. So, will you go with the Lord's presence, the Lord's peace, the Lord's power, and the Lord's purpose? Please, the world needs it. Amen. We continue singing with the, uh, the insert, Because He Lives, one of my favorites. Well done. Well done. 
<coughs> you can, oh yeah. Friends, the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, and those who live in it, even us. Freely you have received, freely give. Let us worship God by joyously giving our time, our talents, and our treasures as a token of our love. Loving God, we have so many reasons to say thank you to you, your generosity, grace, and mercy are astounding, and we pray that the gifts we offer in worship and throughout, throughout the week might be used in your name. Help us to be generous with our money, but also with our talents and time. Strengthen us to recognize your blessings, to be grateful, and respond accordingly. Amen. You see <clears throat> okay, joys and concerns. First, uh, first joys. What joys do we have? Amen. God in your grace. In your grace. Other words. OK, 
Okay, how about uh, concerns? There's, we have, do I listen, do I read these? Oh, 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 a joy up there, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the kids are outside playing in the sun. Yeah. God in your grace. Yeah. Hear our prayer. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do I read these? these? Yeah. So there are concerns I have here, and, and I'll ask you if there's the other ones. Uh, family and friends of Patty, a friend of the Keplers, please pray for support. God in your mercy. Family and friends of Catherine Grocky, a member, please pray for support. God in your mercy. Patience, a friend of Gail Landazuri's, Patience is working through a pancreatic cancer diagnosis. Please pray for strength and healing. God in your mercy. We have other concerns. Not, let's let's continue prayer praying and uh, we'll say the Lord's prayer together. Holy God, thank you for this time and this place and your presence and your peace and your power and given us a purpose. Lord, you've heard the concerns, the joys, the concerns, and you may you even know the ones that are too tender, too sensitive to name. So, Lord, you know those, you know them completely. Lord, we give them to you. We give them to you, the, the word made flesh, the, the risen, reigning Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Continue, our last song is uh, He Lives, also on the uh, insert.
Amen. Well done. Friends, Jesus is present. And when Jesus is present, there is peace. And he gives us his power. He gives us a purpose. He sends us on a unique path this week and beyond. Friends, go in the grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the overwhelming tsunami of God's love, and the presence and the peace and the power of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen.